Conversations with Garmami. I am joined by Sifu Pat Marsil. How are you doing, Pat? I am doing very good. Yourself, my friend? I'm doing well. Thank you very much for asking. Awesome. I want to ask you one uh, question to start off the interview, of course. In one word, how would you describe uh, 2020? Using one <laughs> word. Frustrating. Frustrating. Okay. I will use that word. <laughs> Fair enough. And I guess we'll obviously, we'll, we'll get into it. But, uh, you know, you, you've got a big team of amateur and professional MMA fighters. How has this, you know, pandemic impacted their training and their development as competitors? Uh, we've had to do a lot of uh, adjustments, like, you know, when we train. So uh, the first lockdown, we actually had to do Mark andre Barrios camp for the UFC. So we had to train like during the day we did, uh, I guess, what you call a bubble. You know, a couple of guys, always the same guys that could bring something to his training camp. And we only trained the, the same four or five guys. Uh, doors closed, uh, taped up windows, uh, <laughs> people coming the back door. And we changed it up a lot. So we did a good camp for him and we prepared him properly. But I, I think that's something we had to do. You cannot go into a cage against another professional and just do shadow boxing or train in your basement by yourself. So uh, we took it upon ourselves. Now in Quebec, professionals are allowed to train. Like if it's your lifestyle with, you know, with your coach, you're not, suppo you're not supposed to train like 20 guys together. So we're still doing that kind of thing, like the bubble thing. So that's been hard uh, as far as scheduling and all that stuff. The hardest part has been uh, for the amateurs, there's absolutely nothing going on. <laughs> so for them to find motivation, you know, a lot of the amateurs, is they're, you know, they're doing this. Either they want to move on to being pros eventually, and others, they're weekend warriors. You know, they're doing this for personal challenge and the, 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 to do it for themselves, give them extra motivation. And right now, having nothing, it's harder for them to be motivated and to take you know, you're usually if you have a competition, you know, you'll take a few days off and you'll train extra. Now you won't do that with uh, nothing coming up. So it's been hard for the amateurs uh, this year, which has been very almost zero competition, whether it be grappling, kickboxing or MMA. The pros were just going hard, but all the comp all the, the events are in the state. So uh, the traveling is harder. The quarantines when you come back, sometimes the quarantines before to do the tests. So everything's been uh a struggle everything's been you know two three times harder than usual training scheduling no events and uh, only a, f a few uh, and some guys uh, it's been hard to have events as well there's only a few leagues uh, in the states uh, actually putting on events and uh, everybody wants to fight right everybody in canada in the states wants to fight so they're getting uh, you know they'll pick guys from the states compared to you know fly the guy down from canada the hotel so it's been harder to get matches. We've still been fortunate uh, enough, but it's been a frustrating year for sure as far as uh, scheduling time and uh, doing, doing this like a bit. Uh, I feel sometimes, you know, you're doing this, uh, trying to hide everything. No posts on Facebook at the beginning that we were training. So it's been, uh, it's been different, you know. But now it's, uh, it's almost like we've adjusted to it for the pros, but it, I think it's frustrating for the amateurs, which they have no competitions coming up. Interesting. And speak to us about how you keep them motivated. How do you keep your students motivated? And how much of coaching is motivating and inspiring uh, your, your, your competitors? Uh, that's a good question. I think actually as a coach, inspiring them and motivating them is actually one of your biggest uh, skill sets as far as your jobs. Or what you, your, if you can motivate them and inspire them, I think you're going to get the best out of them, Right. People need to be reassured. They need to be, uh, you know, that they feel that you're confident in them, that they're getting better. So your ability to make them believe in themselves and your ability to make them see their potential and develop their potential is your main goal as a coach. And right now, what I've been telling all of them is, you know, when they're going to announce the competitions are going to start over, it's not time. Well, I took nine months off and I took, uh, you know, I put 25 pounds on. I forgot, I forgot all my stuff. Uh, you've done martial arts as well. You know how it works with timing and all that stuff. You know, you miss a couple of months, your timing is not the same and your, your reflexes are not the same. So I've been trying to, you know, play the card where, you know, use this time to, you have extra time, go run, go run every day, do your push-ups every day, you know, come and tra go train on, by yourself uh, uh, in your basement. And then when we have uh, sessions where we can do private trainings, let's really upgrade your skills. So when they will restart, instead of uh, being regressed, you'll have progressed. So I'm trying to get that, and most of them have been uh, pretty good with that as well. You know, they understand where I'm coming from. Where whether you have a fight or not, you should be as a martial artist progressing and staying in shape. You know, being in shape, 
this uh, pandemic has shown one thing, right? If you're healthy, your chances of staying healthy are higher. If you're sick and you have heart problems, lung problems, those people are at risk of having, you know, any disease, not just COVID, any disease can be uh, dangerous for you. So I think uh, I've passed the message on that health and being in shape and being ready to fight is a lifetime thing. It's not just I, I get in shape for fights. And I've been fortunate that most of my, uh, of my team has been responsive to that. And for the pros, it's a great opportunity for them, right? At one point, there was nothing on uh, on TV. The only thing on TV was UFC. So, And Dana White said this at the um, – when we're at the UFC after the weigh-in, Garmami, they, Dana White brought all the guys in and he said, okay, right now there's no football, there's no basketball, there's no hockey. Everybody is watching UFC. And we saw it with the – you know, the prelims were uh, pulling big numbers – even casual people that they had nothing to do, they were watching UFC. So he said, take that disadvantage to make big performances and people know who you are. So I've been telling them, you know, some people are not going to fight, but right now their eyes are on you guys. So it's time to, you know, take advantage of it. Let's, uh, let's make the best of it. And um, it's been okay. Very interesting. For, for sure, there's been a lot of, you know, high visib visibility as far as uh you know mma fighters particularly in, in the ufc and obviously in june you were you were down in vegas for for the yeah. UFC, and in november you went back down to the the wyoming i think it was yeah yeah that was fun <laughs> yeah so speak yeah. to us about both those experiences for you uh ufc their uh ufc is a machine right as far as the organization itself uh they had uh, a whole uh, hotel reserved with only UFC staff, only UFC fighters, kind of a little villa. So on the left side of the villa was the red corners. On the, the other side was the blue corners. All the staff stayed there. All the fighters stayed there. You couldn't go in there if you weren't part of the UFC show. So they're very organized. Uh, COVID tests three times during the week, uh, temperature every morning. Uh, had a driver to drive you everywhere to the PI center or to go get groceries and sort. So they're very organized. So it's actually the UFC makes everything easy being such a big organization. And they took this, you know, I, they were the only sport at one point that was running. So I think they didn't want to lose that, uh, that status or that, uh, that ability. So they, 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 they made sure that everybody was on point and it was actually very easy. You know, they had a room, uh, we all had suites and the room beside you was your training room, private training room. And this, that's where you cut weight. Everybody had a little sauna that you sit in. So it was very, very well organized. So that went very well. And then uh, the event itself, uh, they bring you to the PI center. Then they bring you to the, uh, the performance center to fight. And everything was fast. You know, sometimes you go to an event at 5 and then you fight at 10.30. You're there a long time. Now you got there half an hour before. You warmed up for 20 minutes. You went to fight. And you came back. So I enjoyed it, actually. Uh, and fighting without a crowd, uh, surprisingly, felt like when, uh, you know, when I was a teenager and we used to have fights at the back of the arena after the parties. And <laughs> it was only like, you know, his gang and your gang. It felt like that, you know, us against them. And we could hear everything that, uh, you know, I could have, uh, you could, you could hear everything, all the strikes, all the shots. It felt very real, very, almost like a street fight uh, in the back of uh, somewhere. So I kind of enjoyed that, uh, that energy, uh, even though I did miss the crowd going out, but during the fight, I didn't mind having no crowd actually. So that surprised me. So it was a very good uh, event, a yeah, good, good experience. I had fun with Marc-Andre and Julien came over with me as well to support him and coach him. And Dave in Wyoming, uh, I enjoyed Wyoming. Garmami. <laughs> Those people are, uh, you know, uh, they like their guns and they're like their, their, they know their, their, their big cowboy hats, their big trucks. And uh, they really, I enjoyed that because it was refreshing in a pandemic to go there where wear a mask if you want to, don't wear, wear a mask if you don't want to. Uh, I enjoyed that because it was, uh, it was, I, I'm a bit like that as well. You know, I think I live and let live. If you want to wear a mask or four masks or, uh, you all good for you. But if I don't want to put one, is you no, know, is it okay if I'm not sick? I think it is. But, uh, over there, it was kind of like that, you know, Midwestern U S so it was fun. And to have the first ever let way championship fight in uh, the States, it was a, a goal that I had written down. Uh, in 2017, after Dave won the championship, I said, we're going to have lightweight fights in the States. And it was actually faster. I wrote a 2022 in my goals wow. uh, and, and it came up uh, earlier. So it was a big fight again. You know, a guy, uh, Cyrus Washington, you know, here people don't know much about striking, unfortunately. I know you're a big judo guy. Uh, it's a little bit like saying who's the best judo guy in the world. Most people here in Canada or in Quebec, I don't know. 
he's in the UFC. If he's not in the UFC, I don't know him. You know, but uh, striking's a bit like that. You know, they don't know all these guys in Asia and in Europe and guys like Cyrus who have, you know, won three world championships and fought everybody. And so it was a challenge to fight him and Dave did a big performance. It was a rough, violent, uh, bloody fight, which uh, to me, that's uh, like the essence of let way was rough. And uh, we trained hard for that one and we wanted to finish Cyrus, which he has not been finished a lot in hard fights. So it was fun. The atmosphere was very cool in the Outlaw Saloon, which is a big saloon where you usually have like a country concerts, like with 2,000 people and rodeos outside. So it was a cool atmosphere. It felt like Roadhouse in the movie, you know, we we're going to the double deuce. But uh, it was fun. So I enjoyed that as well. It was All these little things are all experiences to me that I'm going to remember when I'm, uh, when I'm really old. Uh, you know, I, we did this and I'm, I'm happy that I'm doing this with, uh, with good guys like Dave and Mark andre that have been with me since they're teenagers. It makes it... It makes it even more special to see uh, to see them succeed and to to get these experiences with them as well. So, so Pat, it sounds like you've had a quite an adventure out there. Uh, now, tell us a bit more about the Wyoming experience, and also give us context as to how you guys were able to manage to to book Dave at, at this event. Uh, first, uh, we saw, I've been, you know, I've been paying attention online and looking at, you know, options for all the pro fighters and everybody. Then I'm across, I came across this league Sparta, which I've been especially out of Denver for the last 12 years. And I saw a letway fight against a fighter that had four or five fights at glory kickboxing, which is one of, you know, one of the biggest organizations for uh, kickboxing in the world against a uh, former UFC fighter. And they did a full on letway fight. And I watched the fight. And then as soon after, I uh, said to Dave, these guys did a full, like, traditional rules, full blast, bare knuckle, headbutts, uh, letway fight between two high-caliber guys. Why don't we give them a call and ask them if they'd be interested in, you know, having you fight? Then as soon as we got in contact with them, uh, they got back to us right away, very interested. They were excited. Then we asked the WLC for, uh, since they told Dave, you can't uh, travel for the next year, well, can we do this fight? And they said, yes, we'll give you an exception in your contract to fight. And as long as you give us, you know, a bit of publicity and, you know, some credibility and all that. So we did, you know, we had the shorts and the shirts and all that. So everybody went out in the end and uh, that's how we organized this. And then Cyrus Washington, of course, has been asking for a rematch for three years. And instead of being in Thailand because of the pandemic, he was uh, training in Chicago or Detroit, I believe. And then, so it all panned out well to have uh, the two guys ready to do a, uh, Because this fight is something that one championship wanted to do last year, like a lightweight super fight, Dave and Cyrus. So we kind of did it ourselves uh, in Wyoming with uh, the great Wyoming people who are very, uh, you know, I found them very, <laughs> you know, they, they had big guns to go to the, the subway and the big trucks and the gun racks at the back. And, you know, they, they, but they were very nice, very uh, welcoming. They, they, they made us feel really at home. And uh, I enjoyed the you know, the attitude and the energy that they had. Uh, there was like 800 people in the crowd, uh, maybe, because they couldn't fill out more than that. That was the regulations. But it didn't feel like 800. You know, they were really into it. So it was uh, an excellent event to be at and uh, historic to, as far as to have to bring Letway from Asia to, to the States. Hopefully we do it again. Yeah, so s speak to us about Dave in terms of his, uh, his, his achievement uh, and, and, and so on. And what's next for him? Uh, next up, like Dave's 28, so he's defended his, I think he defended the belt, uh, I think it's nine times now. And uh, for people who know striking, you know, he's fought uh, Lupini champion, he's fought uh, Sutsakorn, who's one of the top fighters at Thai fights, he fought uh, WKN champion in Quarantin Jalon, ex UFC fighter in Seth Vichinsky, uh, all the top Burmese fighters that, uh, that are still like Tun Tun Min is still knocking people out and winning all his fights. So he's fought a lot of tough guys and big guys. and Dave is tall, but you've seen Dave. He's not a big guy. He walks around at this last fight. He, he didn't cut weight. He was 174.8. Wow. And Cyrus was 184. So he was almost 10 pounds bigger than Dave. As far as, uh, you know, his frame is shorter, but much more muscular. So most of the time, contrary to mo what most people believe, Dave is actually, well, he weighs less than most of the guys that he fights. And a couple of the guys like uh, Jalon and uh, Seth were big, big dudes, like 25 pounds bigger than him, six foot three. So I'm really happy with what he's done. And uh, what he's done as an ambassador for Litway is, uh, to me, is uh, in four years is crazy from a martial art that was extremely popular in Asia, but 
relatively unknown everywhere else. Now they want to do the world championships in Europe next year. Wow. They want to, they had a fight in the States. They have some in Europe. Uh, then Rivia did a fight as well uh, in Europe, uh, in England, I believe Manchester, uh, just before the pandemic. And he did really good. He trained the, uh, Uh, with Dave at the school for that, and he just uh, went right through his guy as well. Dan is made for that as well. I think Dan should fight Litwick again. He's got that energy for that. Uh, so I think it's it's uh, phenomenal what he's done to bring this very uh, special warrior art to uh, to light in a very very short amount of time. So he's done a great job. And uh, next up, we've had the future. We're talking with uh, WLC, and if uh, it's not done yet, but he so he would be probably fighting one of the most decorated European uh, Muay Thai fighters uh, that's been around in the last 10 years. If uh, if that uh, if this matchup comes to to fruit, that's really interesting. Now, speak to us about your other fighters, pro or an amateur, leading yeah. to 2021. What, what what's in the works for them? Next up, uh, as far as let's say the schedule is, uh, Isaac Blais. He's supposed to fight at the end of January. His agents are uh, looking to book him right already now in the States. So as he's been training for about two months, pretty hard, like as he is in camp, we told him, you know, we're going to get you a fight at the end of January. So Isaac right now is 2-0 and uh, he could have had a few fights during the pandemic, uh, Garmami, but he had a bad hamstring injury. Like he oh, didn't wow. tear his hamstring, but he had a, he couldn't kick, couldn't grapple. So he had a, maybe a month and a half where it really bothered him. Uh, as far as training as well, we could only do like boxing drills and slow stuff. So, but his the point the the goal is to get Isaac uh, going this year, three four fights if possible. Wow! So starting in January for him and Julien Leblanc also has a fight uh, scheduled uh, first week of February in the states as well. So uh, those are the two guys, and the other guy in the end of February where we're go we're looking for a fight is Serge Dancos as well. So those three guys. Uh, early to 2021 should be in action. And uh, UFC has told us that Marc-André should have a fight probably in March. And Dave is looking to fight again in the spring. So starting 2020, I should have, uh, you know, four or five pros trying to roll and uh, make up for 2020 where they, a few guys of them fought once or none. So we're going to try to make it up uh, in the next year to, to make up time. How do you keep yourself balanced in terms of work life? Because you, you always seem busy with you. you. You've got such a big squad of competitors yep. at, at all levels. How do you, how do you find that, that, that balance, if I can ask? Yeah, I think the, uh, an important skill set in life, and a lot of people have a hard time with that, is time management. Uh, I know I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of people have that, right? They, 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 it's, they, for me, I always, got, I always got used to get up early. I get up early. Uh, and I do a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, I train my own personal training every morning. Uh, I schedule all my day. Uh, like tonight, before I go to bed, I'll write down what I have to do tomorrow. So for me, everything's written down. You know, I got to pick this up, do this, do that. And everything's done. Almost like a little mini schedule. And I scratch everything off. And then the next day, if I, there's a few things I didn't do. They're the first on the list for the next day. I've done this since I'm a teenager. I've always had to have, you know, a lot of discipline. Wow. And opening up a school, you know, I had a business at 18 years old with, a, you know, a big bank loan and uh, rents. So <laughs> I had to get di disciplined and organized. So for me, time management, you know, certain days I'll work like uh, I can do seven, eight hours of martial arts in one day. But then I, when I get home, I turn off the phone and uh, I play with my, with my daughters and I do stuff on you know, Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon. You know, some guys, they'll finish a video game in three I you know, in three days, but for me, it'll take me three years to finish the same one. You know, when they say, hey, did you finish? I don't know. Uh, that new, uh, no, uh, no, no, I haven't. You know, some yeah. people are, how did you finish that game in three friggin' days? Oh, I didn't sleep. I didn't go to work. I, no, for me, I don't do that. Like that's uh, when I have time, I'll do that stuff. For me, there's all priority training, family and business is always the top three. So Family's number one. You always take care of my kids and my girls and my wife and family time. And I'm fortunate. My wife does martial arts. She teaches martial arts. I just finished classes uh, and my kids were in that class. So I got to interact with them and be with them. So I'm fortunate that everybody is in this with me. So that helps a lot. And the other thing is to just manage your time properly for work, family, and then all your other stuff, you know, but some people, you know, they have to do their boys night, uh, watch hockey. And then the boys night to go to me. I don't have uh, It's not that I don't enjoy hanging out with uh, with people. I do that with my students and with right. my uh, my brother-in-laws. But I don't have you know my my group of guys that I have to go uh, eat wings and drink beer and watch a football game. Uh, I do not have that. I've never had that. So that all that time is with my family, 
and toward my business and my my own training as well. But I've I've always been like that, so it's not uh, nothing wrong with uh, you know what works for you. But time management is important. No, it sure is. It's really interesting to to hear that, Pat. Now, in terms of uh, measuring success, how, how do you do that? In terms of measuring success personally and, and professionally, how do you how do you go about with that? Um, let's go personally first. For me, is the how I feel inside myself when I go to bed at night. How uh, do I believe in myself that I've helped people that day, that I bettered you know, society, that I helped out. I was a valuable member. Uh, even if that involves you know, that we fought that day and we, we unfortunately had to try to win a competition or I made somebody better physically, mentally, through classes. I worked on myself as a person. You know, more discipline, more patience. I spent time with my kids. Uh, I taught my kids something. Uh, I spent time with my wife. To me, that's the success is when I look at myself in the mirror, do I like what I see? Uh, as far as what I accomplish, what I bring every day to the people around me, and also what people uh, reflect of me. You know, if you ask somebody, is he a good coach? Is he a good instructor? Is he a good person? Is he a good dad? Is he a good husband? To me, that somebody says yes and uh, that they respect uh, what I do and the work I put in, to me, that's success. Uh, of course, money is always important, right? So it's a, that's a tool to be able to enjoy your life and to enjoy experiences and stuff. So that I think that comes with it. And as a coach, I think we have to look at every student individually, right? We, My instructor used to say you have A students, B students, and C students. You know, the A students, the guy who comes in who's a – learns everything fast, gets everything off the bat, uh, athletic, uh, might have done martial arts before or football. Him, it's easy to, to, to teach him. You know, then you have your B student, which is your regular guy, puts in the work, he's good. And then you have your C student that, you know, can't do a push-up, can't stand on one leg more than three seconds. Uh, you know, he turns his head all the time. Uh, and to take a, you know, take a C student and make him a B or A student, even if he's not going to make it to the UFC, to me as a coach is a big accomplishment because some people have more natural uh, skills and, and abilities. So you don't want to judge just those guys. So to me, I always try to see, can I take somebody who really doesn't have uh, this naturally, natural ability or maybe has no discipline, doesn't, doesn't want to do this. You know, he wants to, but he doesn't want to. Can I show him how to be self-motivated? And then he takes care of his health and his training. So as a coach, for me, I go individually with people and it's what kind of a success rate and how much impact I've had on the students individually as uh, what their goals were and how much I was able to, to make them better as, uh, from where their starting point is. So I think that's the, the most important thing, even though you know, we have a lot of belts on the wall at the school and you know, trophies and a lot of pros. For me, everybody that comes in has a different story and I try to make it a success for each person as much as I can. That's a fascinating uh, answer, you know. Uh, it's about, there's, there, there's so many layers there as far as uh, I would imagine coaching so many different characters with, yeah. with different uh, goals and, and so on. And, and you also mentioned the fact that you've produced a lot of competitors at, at, at the highest level, you know, competing internationally and so on. Where do you see yourself as a coach in the next decade? I'll be tired. <laughs> uh, for me like my coaching style I am my goal is to keep it up as long as I physically can because uh you've seen a little bit like I a high coach I like to coach hands-on you know you're, I, you're 100 all the guys it. yeah you're 100 you're, 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 in there, you're essentially training like you're you're uh it's incredible yeah. you're fighting you're training with your students you're, you're not standing on the sidelines. You're, you're leading the way and you're fully involved. And, yeah. you know, you're putting in almost like eight hours a day, I would imagine, in total. Sometimes, yeah. So I've seen, you know, guys coach uh, from the sides on a chair and they have outstanding fighters as well. Sure. But to me, this is how I was taught and this is how I enjoy it as well. You know, uh, opening a school very, very young. I did compete a few times, but I also missed out. Uh, you know, in the, the good years of MMA where it's available and there's a lot of competitions and, you know, pay-per-view, you can make a living doing this and it's much, much more easier. 
for me, having a school early, a family early, responsibility early, early, I couldn't really, okay, I'll do this as a career and get paid 400 bucks per fight. So I still, I'm still in good shape. I'm still healthy. I'm injury free. So I'm still able to kind of live it with the guys as well, you know, but I do enjoy uh, sparring with the guys, grappling with the guys, wrestling with the guys, being in the, my instructor would say you, you're in the trenches with them, you know, and they, they, I think they appreciate it. They enjoy it as well. I get to see, you know, their, their energy. I get to feel it. I get to see them get better. Uh, but I want to do that as long as I possibly can. And then I'll do all the knowledge I've acquired and all the experience I'll acquired. You know, I'll, uh, I'll share it verbally and technically. And, and I think that's fine as well. But, uh, in 10 years, I'm, I'm seeing, you know, my, my goal is to have guys like Dave and Marc Andre and Julien, which are, you know, they're just getting a late twenties, early thirties. I want them to, we can look back all of us together and they've accomplished as much as they want. You know, they, they've been to big shows, they've done well, and they're proud of their careers and young guys like, uh, Isaac and Serge that are, you know, early twenties, you know, in 10 years, they're only going to be 30. They'll be where the guy, these guys are at now, you know? Right. So my goal is to get these guys in the big shows and to develop their potential to the fullest. And, uh, by that time I'll be, you know, my mid fifties. So my goal will be that I, I can look back and, uh, I gave it a good run, uh, as far as helping. And then I, I want to still be able to coach like my, for me, as long as I can do this physically, I'll help. And then uh, I have a couple of kids that, uh, I can tell they're looking up to these guys. You know, they're 11 and 12. And if it's something they want to do, well, I still I'm going to do my best uh, to give them to, to the support they need to uh, to achieve their goals. But uh, I'm looking to having a, a good team of instructors right now. I'm running a lot of the classes, but uh, I I am building up good guys. A couple of the guys that are fighters have told me, you know, I want to help to teach when I'm finished with this. So my goal is to keep the the pat node, the name, style, brand, and uh, the service that we provide as far as our martial art approach is to to keep it up for the next generations and to, to duplicate myself uh, is my goal in the next 10 years to have other people that can coach with, uh, you know, hopefully the passion and energy that I have. And to, to that's, that's my main goal for now. And to be able to enjoy uh, the fruits of my success, you know, and what, what we've accomplished. And since I'm, you know, I'm uh, nine years old. And in total, how many years have you been involved in? in uh, started when I was nine and I'm 45 now. So, uh, and I started teaching at 15 uh, and I got opened up my school at 18 years old. So uh, wow. this has been my life, right? So this has been what I, what I enjoy, what I love to do. You know, I just finished class and then uh, I'm doing an interview with you and I'm enjoying myself talking about this. So to me, it's, uh, and after probably when I'm going to go eat uh, my supper, I'll probably watch a fight on UFC fight pass and study some, some stuff. And uh, to me, it's a passion and it's a, mm -hmm. uh, it's a way of life. So I enjoy it. Uh, I watched a movie with my daughter, uh, the last samurai, you know, the Tom Cruise movie, she had never seen that. She's 13 years old. And when we were watching that, she, she told me a few times, you know, these guys are like you, dad. But in those days, you know, they, they, wow. that's all they do. I said, yeah, that's that's pretty much how it is. I say, no, times have changed, but some people still have, you know, you try to have those old values of discipline and perfecting yourself. And uh, But for me, it's been, uh, I want to help my students that are there for me as well. I've been fortunate with this pandemic, uh, Garmai, me. I have students that have, uh, you know, they haven't been coming to class, but they told me, don't stop my membership. I want to support the school. I've had people do a lot of private classes that uh, have not done private before. So, you know, uh, honestly, a shout out to a lot of my students and people that, uh, families that have been coming to my school for a long time that have really shown me really good support and have not asked anything in return. So um, I really appreciate that. I'm, ha I'm, I'm blessed to have good people around me. That's awesome, man. It's, it, it, it's great to, to hear that. Uh... I think people really value great coaches like yourself, you know, and it's, it, it's good to hear that they're, they're training and, and they're still motivated. A lot of the times I, I have, I have one last question, but I'm going to throw in an, another one because I I'm uh, I'm curious to know. So there's, there's so many martial arts out there of, of the different styles and, and, yep. and so on. And, and you guys offer a, a, an interesting traditional, you know, style, that has it, it. It has many layers to it. In, in mm -hmm. addition to that, it, it's it's got a base in kung fu, right? Yeah. And uh, the reason why I ask that is because I'm beginning to see more and more. Um, you know, just as a fan, as an as an observer, it seems to me that some styles sometimes don't really have a um, a sort of like a values and ethics base. You know, in terms mm -hmm. of just yeah. ensuring people are disciplined, focused, respectful. 
Speak to us on the value of that and the role of that in your teaching. And uh, the reason why I ask that is because I think th these traditional martial arts and, and especially with, with, with that foundation, there's a greater need for them now than ever before because you have a whole generation of, of martial artists who are coming up extremely skilled, extremely physically talented, very capable. But it seems for some, for some, yep. um, there's no foundational basis in terms of values and ethics. I know, I know this probably might irritate some people to, you know, yep. for, for, for me to say that, but I think if there's ever a time for, for people to think about the role of ethics or, or values in, in why you train and, and, and when you use these, these skills, now's the time, you know, with the yep. state of the world and so on. So just speak, I don't know if you agree with what I'm saying or not, yep. but I, I want to hear, I want to hear that opinion. I think uh, as far as the, you know, what some people would call the traditional martial art values, sure. you know, the ones that everybody in the 80s used to put on their flyer. Oh, yeah. Yes, <laughs> that's, exactly. the one, that's the one I call. Yes, <laughs> yes. Know, I mean, everybody would, would put that, but did everybody teach that? For me, starting, like we said earlier, as a kid, I started when I was a kid. So for me, it uh, formed, it molded me, it, um, it influenced me as far as, You know, discipline will help you at every, everything you do, everyday jobs, everyday work. Uh, you know, you said the, like, you, you your, with your kids, all that stuff, discipline, patience, uh, respect of others. You know, somebody, like I said earlier, let's say another martial art, this guy wants to do a jujitsu, the other guy is the sambo, the other guy does wrestling. To me, it's all, there's good and uh, efficient techniques in all of these martial arts. Right. Uh, you have to pick and choose which one works best. For us, we use you know, Bruce Lee concepts. Uh, whether you're ever a lot of different ways to be efficient in combat or in self-defense, uh, a lot of different ways, a lot of ways to, to, to cook food, lots of ways to fight. So for us, the same, but for me, I was brought up where martial arts should be a vehicle to help you also succeed in your everyday life. because you're not going to be constantly fighting. If you're not competing, you shouldn't be fighting every week or else there's something, uh, it's probably not other people. It's probably you. And then if you are going to compete, to me, you still have to compete. You know, Dave competes in a very aggressive uh, sport. Dave has, a, you know, he has a, uh, his own mindset. You know, he's very intense, very aggressive. But he always respects his opponents after the fights. You know, after the fights, he'll go see them. Uh, you saw that with Cyrus and everybody else as well. But uh, Macandre, same thing. I don't like the goon uh, approach of martial arts, like, you know, the bully and the loud mouth. I do not like that. I don't preach that. You know, I try to... Uh, not make my students be like that. Uh, sometimes they'll say stuff in interviews and they'll tell me, see who I said this, but I know you don't like it, but you know, I had to say it. I said, oh, I know it's okay. You know, but it's like, for me, that's not my style. I like, uh, you know, a Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, who's going to beat you up. but doesn't have to trash talk or do anything like that. I like that for me. I think discipline is a big core value, which helps you in everything you do, whether in martial arts or in your everyday life, uh, respect for others and yourself, you know, Respect starts with yourself. You have to respect who you are, your values, yourself as a person, um, and where you're, you know, from your family and your, your parents and everything else. And also all the other stuff, the, the ability to uh, be around others. I think martial arts teach that as well. You know, we were talking about this. I was talking about this with somebody. And you've seen this before. You know, you'll have in the class, a martial art class, you'll have people of different ethnicities, different ages. Uh, you'll have guys who've been in jail training with a cop. You'll have, uh, you know, The big guy who's, you know, he was black with the small white guy who's got all these tattoos. And then you'll have the lady uh, and with the other guy. So I think martial arts is a great way to bring people together. And after the end of the class, nobody cares, you know, where you're from, what you do. Uh, and you get to really know people properly through sweating and training and fighting and helping each other. You know, that support system in a martial arts school. Right. So I think that's really important to have those values right now. And for me, I've always used them because it is something that I grew up with that helped me, you know, through my te teenage years and all that stuff. And I, I, I try to teach with, uh, to, to train, to have good people as much as possible and to help them uh, in their everyday life. because we're not going to be always just fighting another person physically. You'll be fighting stuff emotionally and mentally. And I think uh, this pandemic has shown it, you know, how many people are depressed, how many people are uh, not feeling good. Uh, so that's fighting against, you know, yourself or something that you can't fight back physically. You can't punch or choke this thing. You got to be strong mentally. So I think martial art, core discipline, whether every martial art, I think there's Muay Thai crews that have that 
those values, others do not. Boxers, some of them, you know, will be have a goon attitude, others absolutely not. So I've met all different kinds from all different kinds of martial arts. So I think it comes from your instructor and it also comes within yourself. That's an excellent answer. I mean, I, I, I think in, in addition to that, there's also even things simple like uh, simple themes like meditation and the role of mm -hmm. breath, you know, yeah. calming people down, uh, you know, who might have anxiety, who might have stress, yeah. you know, it's, Absolutely. it's those, those components, I think, in, in various styles you, you see, and they're ingrained in them. But I think for some, uh, you know, we're just so fascinated with the, with the, Uh, sport aspect of the yeah. actual fight that uh, which is great I'm not taking anything away from that but it's all it's also interesting if you reflect on other aspects to, to, to have mm -hmm. a more wholesome experience because as you mentioned one doesn't fight their entire life you know There, there's other yeah. things to, to explore maybe I'm just getting older quite frankly but I think that aspect is really important for for anyone you know uh, like my back is hurting right now you know and I'm yeah. You, you got to stretch, you got to meditate. We, we know all, all these, yep. you know, important things. So it's, uh, I'm, I'm just happy to, to, to have asked that question to you because I, I feel that sort of reflection, to be honest, on, 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 on those sorts of things. Yep. I don't see it a lot in, in martial arts, at least mm -hmm. in, 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 the, in the sports aspect of it, you know, yeah. like MMA. And mm -hmm. I'm a huge MMA fan. And I think, uh, It's, it, I think it's relevant across the board, quite frankly. Absolutely. I have one last, yeah, I have one last question for you. I really appreciate, appreciate your time. It's, it's my pleasure, Garmani. Anytime. It, it's late right now, but I just, I think this is an important one as well. What advice would you give to any aspiring amateur or professional uh, MMA fighter? But, you know, whether they're starting today or they're halfway through their career and, uh, you know, They, they, they might be lost or confused yeah. or, or unhappy with, with their professional and personal development. First off, uh, if you're starting out, it's important to find uh, a team and a coach that you will feel comfortable with. So a good fit, it's a bit like a relationship, you know, like a girlfriend, husband, wife. Not everybody will have a great fit. Like when I have people come to my school, you know, I teach a certain way. It might not work for everybody and that's okay and that's normal and you have to, but if you do find a team that will care for you, whether you, when you win, when you lose uh, and that are going to support you all the time, you have to, you know, stick with those guys and push with those guys and build like a family and they're like, a, you know, like the old times, like a clan and you work together toward your goals. You know, a lot of people have been, you know, since their kids with the, their instructors and different partners, but you need a lot of good partners to train with. You need a mentor and a coach that will support you no matter what happens, the ups and the downs. It's fun when it's going good, but you need somebody on your, in your corner that's uh, in, on your side when it's going not as good. Good training partners, variety of training partners. That's what you need when you're starting out. Don't, uh, if it goes back to a bit of the training, don't put away the fundamentals, you know, If you're grappling, learn how to pin people and how to do the fundamental submissions when you're striking before you're going with the flying triple uh, inside crescent kick. Uh, try just to do a good friggin' side kick and a roundhouse and some good decent hands. And I think fundamentals are key. Patience, good teammates, good sparring partners. Don't be afraid to go and train with uh, people you're not comfortable with to test yourself. A good mentor that cares for you when you win and when you lose. People that have been in this game and have not going well, I think you have to make decisions. Honestly, MMA and fighting as a career is not easy. Mm. Uh, you know, some people think, oh, I made it. Uh, he made it to the UFC. He's at glory. Uh, he's in the UFC. He's rich. You know, while I know some guys at glory that made, you know, $2,000 to fight for the championship. You're not going to be rich doing that, right? And some people think, you know, I, I went to fight in Thailand. I'm rich. Some guys in Thailand, you know, they, made, they make a thousand bucks for a championship fight in a very brutal sport where you have to dedicate your life to it. So I think uh, it's important to find out, do you want to do this as a full-time job or you want to do this as a, you know, I want to fight once a year, twice a year. I have a couple of guys like that, you know, we schedule camps and we have the, they fight once a year because it's a personal thing, but we don't have any, we don't, uh, we don't bullshit ourselves. We're okay. Uh, we're going to the UFC, right? We're going to train uh, three months and then you're going to work and have your com construction company on the side and, You're going to go to the cottage all summer with your kids, but we're going, right? So I think that's important to be honest with yourself. I would tell all 
anybody, you have to sit down, look at yourself in the mirror, write stuff down like you're writing to yourself. What are your goals? What's your dream? Is this a burning dream? I, I got to do this or I'm going to regret it for the rest of my life. And if so, well, you got, are you training like you're supposed to? Are you listening to your coaches like you're supposed to? Are you putting the time in? And uh, I think those are the important things you have to reassess. Are you really doing what the others guy, the other guys that are at that level, are, are you doing what they're doing? You know, you got to be, you can't half-ass this. I think it's impossible in, uh, at this point. Uh, or you want to go to the Olympics in judo or boxing, but you want to train, you know, only the Tuesday at eight. No, it's not going to happen like that, you know. So you got to reassess your goals and your objectives. Talk to yourself and be, again, I think it goes to people around you. Be well surrounded with people that you feel comfortable with. That's an excellent answer. I, I really appreciate that. If I may just have one small follow-up. Go. Uh, how do you differentiate, uh, because you use the word, you know, coach and mentor. And I just want to know, are, are they both the same or are they different? And if so, how, how would you differentiate between a mentor um, and a coach? Good in, question. For, from I your think, experience. I think a mentor will be also giving you a coach can be technical. Like we could define like a coach is going to, you know, show you how to do the punch, the kick, the clinch or the defense technically sound and when to apply it, how to apply it. I think a mentor is somebody that you can also have that's going to help you uh, deal with a loss, deal with uh, personal problems outside of the, you know, how do I do my jab cross uh, side kick or uh, front kick or how do I defend the arm bar? So some coaches are technical coaches, you know, they are very good technically. Other, I think mentors would be, you know, like my instructor was a very good coach, but also a very good mentor, uh, you know, showed me how to manage my money, uh, showed me how to do good investments, uh, showed me how to, you know, uh, we talked about, you know, how to react to certain situations which had no relation to fighting or martial arts. So I think a mentor can help you maybe spiritually or emotionally or as a, on the, the life side, side of things. Right. Some coaches will be both. I try to be both because I think it's important. And, uh, but some guys are just mentors and you can ask them about, uh, you know, how do I do this? <laughs> they don't know. But the, the other, and other people are very good coaches as far as technical coaches, how to do something, but they will not uh, be able to give you maybe advice or to, to help you out or be there uh, on the other level. So I think that's uh, the difference between somebody who can mentor you to go somewhere and somebody who can just coach you technically for fighting. So some people are both, some people are one or the other. And again, it goes back to who you are. Man, it's, it's been a fantastic interview. Thank you very much for your time and, and your, your input. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, where can we find you online? Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Sifu Patrick Marcel. I'm also on Instagram, I, Sifu Patrick Marcel as well. Keep it simple. So it's, uh, and so it's pretty easy to, to find me on Instagram or on Facebook if uh, someone wants to give me a message or a shout. And of course, uh, my school is in Gatineau, Quebec. Hopefully we can open in January and start doing group classes. And also teach, uh, you know, we have schools, me and my family, my brother, uh, my, all my in-laws, uh, Montreal, Orleans, Ottawa. We had just Tonight I finished a class in Castleman, so uh, the last class before this, uh, the uh, Christmas uh, break. So uh, we're easy to find if somebody wants to, to chat or has any questions. Thanks for having me, Garmami. It's always a pleasure to chat with you.